Now it simply says that we are given the root of a binary tree. Firstly, we have a binary tree and we are given the root of the root of that specific tree and an integer distance. As you can see, root of a binary tree and the integer distance we are given. Now, a pair of two different leaf nodes of a binary tree is said to be good. Again, firstly, we have to focus only on the leaf nodes. You know, leaf nodes are the nodes who have no children at all. So this is a leaf node and this is a leaf node. I have to go and look for all the pair of leaf nodes of that specific binary tree and they are said to be good if the length of the shortest path between them is less than or equal to the distance which is given to us. So ultimately my task is take all the leaf nodes, let's say I grab all the leaf nodes and again they could have more leaf nodes, let's say I have 5 also, again this is not a binary tree but imagine, okay, let's say you have 5 and 6, so now the leaf nodes are 4, 5 and 6, so take all the leaf nodes for all the pairs which means 4, 5, 4, 6 and 5, 6, grab the shortest path between them and that shortest path should be less than or equal to my distance. In that scenario, that is a good pair. I have to find all such pair. Now, first very basic thing which could have striked you if you have been following us is that Aryan, I have to grab all the leaf nodes. That's one task. Okay. Now, after grabbing the leaf nodes, I, I let's say have, let's say these five leaf nodes I have I have got. Now for these leaf node, let's say A and C, I have to grab the shortest distance between them. To get the shortest distance between any two nodes, you know that it has to go via LCA. We saw the exact same problem in which we have to print the path itself. Here I am just asking for distance, not even the path. So I can use this exact same approach to imagining I know two nodes, I just have to get the shortest distance in O of n time by using this video. Again, this works on the basis of LCA. If you don't know what LCA is, or if you don't know how to find the shortest distance between any two nodes, go and watch this video. Now, consider again, link in description. Now, considering you have watched it, you know that you will have, let's say, two values. You can find in O of n time the shortest distance between those two values, which is A and C in this case, in O of n time. And now, I could have all the pairs how like I could have all the all such you know nodes so like for all the pairs because now a and c is there now a and d will be there now a and e will be there now a and b will be there so okay imagining I could have n square pairs for n square pairs I will have to go and find the shortest distance between them using O of n time by using my LCA technique and this will take ultimately O of n cube time. Oh, that's pretty much considering my n number of nodes in the tree can be like 2 to 10 which is around 1024 which you can imagine as 1000 or you can imagine as 10 to 3. So n cube will be large. Okay, how I can improvise it? Let's see. So, okay, we saw that LC didn't work out um, because we have to go roughly to O of n square uh, number of pairs and that's one thing which we cannot afford. But ultimately, our main aim was still, let's say for these leaf nodes, for the leaf node 4, I ultimately have to go and find the shortest distance to 5, to 6, to 7, to 9, to 11. This is what I have to do. Earlier, what I was doing is I was taking 4, 5, then running my LCA technique and then finding distance, then taking 4, 6, then doing the same thing. Now, what we realized is ultimately it is shortest distance from a single node. Aren't I simply use a technique for BFS? You might have started thinking, you guardian, why not Dijkstra and stuff? Bro, there is no edge weights. So you can simply use your simple BFS for shortest distance. If you don't know what BFS is and why it is used, go and watch this graph pop series BFS video. Now we realize that I know this is one node. I can simply start a BFS traversal and can traverse to all the other nodes if they are the leaf nodes 
I will get what is the distance to reach them and that distance if it is less than my given dis given distance I am good to say that this is a good pair and I will repeat this process for all the leaf nodes again if I repeat this process it will look something like this make sure that you have repeated a pair 5 4 and 4 5 is a pair which is repeated so ultimately whatsoever answer you get divide that by 2 but for the folks who have thought this they must have also thought of that this is a tree not a graph in a simple tree you can do a bfs from parent to child but how will you move from your child to parent because now i would say okay four is on the leaf node start bfs traversal from this node four and go to all the other nodes how i can go in from child to parent inside my tree i cannot it's a binary tree it's a binary tree so firstly i will have to convert this entire tree to a graph again simply say it's an undirected graph so i will because right now it's a tree so it is a directed like this i can only go like this but now i know i have to traverse from child to all the other nodes so i will have to convert it to a parent so i'll convert it to an undirected graph okay now it's converted to an undirected graph again if you don't know what uh, what that is go and watch the simple bfs video later now when this is done simply go on to all the nodes simply start a bfs traversal which will iterate to all the other nodes and if the distance to any of the leaf node is less than equal to this this you are good to say it's a good pair ultimately make sure to divide your answer by two but because of one node you are going on to all the other nodes it's a simple bfs traversal so for one node it will take o of n time for one traversal for all the leaf nodes it will take again o of n time in total i can have let's say n leaf nodes in worst case so my time will be o of n square considering i will convert this tree to a graph and then apply bfs traversal from all the leaf nodes okay now can i improvise it it's a question again o of n square is nothing but as you can see n is 1 e3 so n square will be 1 e6 so that's the technique we have improvised can i improvise further uh, maybe maybe not how to even think of it that's a very tricky part but we see that distance is restrictive to 10 maybe i can use this to somehow get something and yeah maybe i can improve the improve the complexity okay maybe let's see so what we realized is ultimately that these are the leaf nodes which are the contributor and again we're just mixing both the approaches which you saw above lc approach and somehow the bfs approach so we realized okay these are the only nodes which are impacted these four and five will be the candidate for a pair then maybe next four and six or five and six or maybe six and seven these are the pairs but they always are impacted and they always have to get the distance from their lca least common ancestor so basically this two will be the one via whom they will have to pass to get the minimum distance so ultimately i will go and grab the distance from two to four which is distance of one I'll grab a distance from 2 to 5, which is a distance of 1. Now I know, okay, distance is 1, distance is 1. Even if I add this distance, it will become a distance of 2, which is less. Which again, this as you can see, I'm grabbing the distance from the leaf nodes up till this node. So I realized it will be, okay, 1 is a distance, 1 is a distance. If I have to ultimately add this distance, so as to move from one leaf to other leaf. So after adding also, it is less than equal to my 3. I'm good to say I have found one pair. You see what I did? I just simply passed in the distance value, distance value. Same way here, he will pass in distance of one. He will pass in a, a distance of one. How to know that Aryan? Bro, any leaf node will return. Any leaf node will return a distance of one to its parent. So this will also say one, this, this will also say one pair I have achieved, one pair I have achieved. But now the things will become a bit complicated. Now, this will pass something to its parent. Ideally, what he should pass? First thing is, the thing which we are passing is the distance to the leaf node from this node. And as 2 is passing information to his parent, obviously, there is one gap which is there. So, obviously, all the distances which were to the, chi like to the children of 2 will actually increase by 1. So this one will actually become a 2 plus 1. This one will also become a 2. Now what this represent is that for 1, I have 
two children both are at a distance of two same way this three will pass in two and two so you saw that three it rated on it rated on on its left children added a plus one three it rated on its right children vector and and added a plus one okay i have got this distance now now again find all the possible pairs so far the pair which i have found out is five four five and six seven now because of this i will say okay this two plus two two plus two it is what two plus two is four two plus two is four which is not which is not less than equal to my three is it gone yeah not less than equal to my three so one sorry so what again this two represents the distance to value four this two represents the distance to value or node five this two represents the distance to node six this two represents the distance to node seven so four and six can they form a pair as you can see two plus two will form an addition of four they cannot form a pair same way two plus two distance from four to seven cannot form a pair distance from this five to this six cannot form a pair because two plus two is again four again five to seven cannot form a pair but still shall i proceed forward and move this information to my parent uh maybe maybe not i mean why maybe because again what if what if you only had a three in this case what if you only had a three in this case so this three would have returned you a value of one saying the distance is one to its leaf child now four again let's imagine this is a node three so four three can make a pair which is two plus one because it is less than equal to your distance which is three so four three can form a pair same way five three can form a pair so what i did i iterated on the left vector and try to make a pair with the right vector when i say pair i will add the corresponding distances and that distance should be less than this distance given value okay when this is done what i should do next technically okay when this is done i have found out the pairs i will increase my answer but i have to also give some value to my more parent like above parent so what he what one will give one will say okay you will have a three you will have a three you will have a two now what this three represents the distance to node four distance to node five distance to node my distance to node three but this is catch there's a catch you will say are okay that seems good um but technically if if i'm passing you passing this information and it will get the information from its right child as only one so i will try to make pair which means three one will be tried as a pair three one will be tried as a pair and two one will be tried as a pair now when this will be tried as a pair obviously two one good candidate can form a pair and will will result in a distance of three but three even if i add any small distance and small distances even one starting from one it will exceed the distance of three so there is no point of even passing in if something has exceeded distance or or equal to the distance so there's no even point of passing it to your parent and that is the crux that if this is a distance let's say this is d so if d plus one if it becomes more than equal to your distance then there is not even any point of passing it to your parent so you should not pass it that is the actual crux which will optimize your time because so if you look closely the distances all will be under 10 and the one exceeding 10 you will for sure just prune them but if you think of a perfect example then the tree having 1024 nodes it's a binary tree so let's pick a perfect binary tree in that scenario in the worst possible case at this point at this point in, on the left side you will have 256 distances having a distance less than 10 same way on the right side you will have 256 distances because you know leaf nodes will be 256 here also the leaf nodes will be 256 thus you will have 256 distances on the right side thus you might end up thinking Aryan, which means that for one node for one node which means for one node i am taking 256 distances on the left 256 distances, 256 distances on the right and thus the complexity is n into 256 into 256 
but Aryan lead code was mentioning n into d square. Are they incorrect? Um, technically, yes, but see, they have given you the average case because you know, as it is starting from the leaf node where this is the case. So you will have only two nodes which you will be multiplying. Here at this point, you will be multiplying four nodes. Here, up here, when you when you reach the worst case, here you are multiplying 256 nodes, 256 nodes and 256 nodes. So that is the reason it came in. But it it was something of this sort that like these all leaf nodes which are 128 nodes they are being multiplied just 2 into 2 sorry i should say yeah uh, these 128 these 128 nodes are having just one one children so it is multiply 1 into 1 then next 64 children multiplied 2 into 2 then next 32 multiplied 4 into 4 and this is how it is actually increasing so this will be your actual complexity if you go and go in terms of the vector itself which means you don't take you don't even take or you don't even sum up the numbers unique numbers but if you look very closely uh, again the average case will still come out to be n into d square again not exactly n into d square because it is not a d it will be somewhere around more than it but again you can just solve it if you want if you feel like coming back to the complexity which you can improvise you know that distances should remain under the limit and you know the unique distances can be at max 10 so why not take an unordered map and just keep okay for that specific distance let's say six in this case how many such leaf nodes are there so rather than keeping a vector rather than keeping a vector to improvise my answer and bring it to actual less than n into d square i can take use of an unordered map no lead code no one has taught it no one focuses on the, on that time complexity i don't know why but people will just say okay you have left child distance less than d so it is d okay d on the right side okay d oh, it's n, n into d square while you will easily see the vector is not how it is derived as n into, n into d square to actually get that you have to use an unordered map or something of a sort which will keep track of for a specific distance to a leaf node how many such nodes are there cool so let's see both the approaches firstly we will see the vector approach which is much much easier to write and understand so i initialized a global variable which is number of good leaf nodes then i initialized to zero i simply called a simple dfs traversal now you know at every dfs call the child the leaf node should return one see the distance from the leaf node to its immediate parent is one so the leaf node should return a one again this is i'm talking in terms of vector i'm basically having a vector i'm maintaining a vector itself while the four it should return empty empty from both its ends so if anything is null it should be written as empty vector now when i have got one one from both the ends as you can see here in this case two two and let's take it more better let's say it is one so my task is i have got something from my left i've got something from my right simply just make pair this is the pair sorry this is the pair which i will make from left to all the rights i will make a pair so i will get things sorry i'll get things from my left i'll get things from my right and i'll simply make a pair which means as you can see left value right value from the left vector and right vector i'll make a pair and we'll say if it is less than equal to my distance I should increase my number of good pairs by one. Now, when this is done, when this is done, your task is primarily to return or basically to give some value to your parent. And when I say some value, you have to make sure to increase it by one, increase it by one, increase it by one, and then return to your parent from both left and right. So I will make a parent vector. I will increase the value by one and will check if it is less than equal to my distance. Although I should check less than my distance that should be also good but okay i just do less than equal to that also will work so in this scenario if it is less than equal to my distance or less than my distance then i can only push that to my parent vector parent vector same for the right and thus re re return my parent vector and as you can see the time complexity for this will be if i go back will be in these terms in these terms cool if you want to just do a mathematics you can do it but but again, uh, people will say it is O of n, n into d square, but uh, you can just go and derive it. I don't think it's, it's actually n, n into d square. Again, if you just do the summation, it can come out to be, let's say n, and then let's say one square plus two square plus four square and so on and so forth, up till let's say something square, and then you can just get the summation out of it. 
Now, just to actually utilize the factor of that the distances, that the unique distances are always less than equal to n, we will just transform this vector to an unordered map. How I will do it? I will simply take an order map instead of simple vector. And now instead of storing the actual vector, I will store the unordered map. As you can see, everything is replaced by unordered map now. Unordered map, unordered map. What I do, the simple change is that now for a value, I have the corresponding frequency also. How many times that value is occurring? So if I go back on the above case, here it will say 3 is occurring twice and 2 is occurring once. And here it will say one is occurring one. One is occurring just once. I should say one is occurring just once. So what happened? The leaf node will say, okay, the the the, the distance is one and it is also occurring one. So how my leaf nodes will change? Leaf node will simply say that they are occurring. The distance of one is occurring once. The key is the distance and the value is the frequency. So I'll re return that for empty. It is simply an empty map also, but. When I have got the left and the right, I will simply iterate on the left and the right frequencies as in like left, left and right pair. I will firstly check the same condition. The value should be less than equal distance. But now I will simply multiply the frequencies. As you know that, uh, as you know, here you have, let's say two. Here you have, let's say one. Or if even if here it would have been two. So frequency of two here is, frequency of two here is two. Frequency of two here is to how many pairs I can form I can form ultimately four pairs so that is what I am referring that for a value for a value I will just form all the pairs and I will simply directly add it ultimately do the same thing uh, put in your parent vector or parent another map iterate on it if it is less put it in your v plus lv plus one and here rv plus one simply putting in my parent unordered map and simply re re returning it this is this is actually which is less than o of n into d square and again space used will be again o of n but this is actually less than o of n into d square and this is the perfect solution but if you will write it in the lead code it will have a larger runtime and a, a bit large memory just because of one factor because you are using an unordered map and average case might be a bit more heavy than the vector approach but best case scenario this is better cool. I hope you guys got everything about the complexity part because no one explains it and that's the worst part about this algorithm. Bye bye, take care about this problem. Do make sure to watch the video right on the in the comment section. In the comment section, right? In the comment section. Bye bye.